Have you ever wondered why in the world Japan has an entire island overrun by rabbits? What's the story behind this fuzzy phenomenon? Imagine an island, a small dot in the Seto Inland Sea of Japan, where the usual hustle and bustle of human life is replaced by a different sort of crowd, an island where the chirping of birds is overshadowed by the soft thumping of hundreds, maybe thousands of fluffy feet. This place is real and it's called Okunoshima, better known as Rabbit Island. Okunoshima did not always hop to the beat of the rabbit drum. In fact, it was once a quiet, unassuming piece of land until the late 1930s. That's when the first wave of fluffy invaders arrived, and since then, the rabbit population has exploded, turning this island into an internet sensation and a must-see for any animal-loving traveler. So how did these cute creatures take over an entire island? Theories abound. Some say that a handful of rabbits were brought to the island for a school trip in the 70s and they did what rabbits do best, multiply. Others believe that these rabbits are the descendants of a colony used in secret chemical warfare experiments during World War II, abandoned and left to thrive. But these are just theories. The truth is, no one really knows how this furry takeover occurred. And perhaps that's part of the island's allure. It's a genuine mystery, a riddle wrapped in a fluffy, twitching enigma. But as cute as this all sounds, there's a darker side to this story, a history hidden beneath the fur and fluff. Beneath the cute exterior, Okonoshima holds a grim secret, a past shrouded in secrecy and fear. Let's take a step back in time to the early 1900s. Amidst the turmoil of World War II, this seemingly harmless island was a hub of clandestine operations. Hidden from prying eyes and erased from maps, Okonoshima was turned into a poison gas factory, a chilling testament to the darkness of war. The island was chosen for its strategic isolation, making it an ideal site for the production of deadly chemical weapons. Cloaked under a veil of secrecy, the island and its inhabitants were engaged in the manufacture of poison gas that was later used in the war. But what about the rabbits, you ask? How do they fit into this grim narrative? Here's where things get a bit murky. Some theories suggest that these furry inhabitants might be descendants of test animals used in the gas factory. As the story goes, these rabbits were supposedly set free after the war, multiplying over the years to create the bunny utopia we see today. However, there's a twist in the tale. Official records contradict this theory, stating that all test animals were euthanized when the factory was shut down. So the origin of the island's rabbit population remains a mystery, adding an intriguing layer to Okunoshima's enigmatic past. Despite the island's dark history, the remnants of the poison gas factory still stand today, a grim reminder of a time best forgotten. They serve as a stark contrast to the image of Okunoshima as a bunny paradise, a dichotomy that fascinates and baffles visitors in equal measure. So the island's past is a stark contrast to the fluffy paradise it's known as today. But what does this mean for the rabbits now? Stay tuned as we delve deeper into this fluffy mystery in the next segment. It's easy to see the appeal of a fluffy paradise, but what's life really like for the rabbits of Okonoshima? The reality is a bit of a mixed bag. On the one hand, the rabbits are free to frolic and multiply, with no natural predators on the island to threaten them. It's a rabbit's dream, one might think. However, the lack of predation means that the rabbit population can quickly get out of control. Overpopulation becomes a significant issue, leading to competition for resources, territorial disputes and the potential for disease to spread rapidly among the densely packed bunny populace. And then there's the food situation. The rabbits on Okunoshima are heavily reliant on tourists for their sustenance. Visitors to the island are often seen feeding the rabbits with a variety of foods, from fresh vegetables to packaged rabbit treats. But what happens when the tourists leave or when tourism numbers drop, as they did during the global pandemic? The rabbits are left to fend for themselves, a daunting task on an island with limited natural food sources. Efforts, though, are being made to manage and care for the rabbit population. Several organizations and dedicated individuals have taken on the task of providing for these delightful creatures. They arrange for regular food drops and even provide medical care for injured or sick rabbits. There are also initiatives to educate the public and tourists about the proper way to interact with the rabbits. This includes guidelines on what to feed them, how to approach them, and the importance of not trying to take a rabbit home as a pet. 
The reality of Rabbit Island is that it's a complex situation. The rabbits are indeed adorable and the opportunity to interact with them is a unique experience. However, their existence is a delicate balance, teetering on the edge of sustainability and disaster. So while it may seem like a bunny paradise, life on Rabbit Island isn't all it's cracked up to be. Now that we've uncovered the truth about Rabbit Island, what does the future hold for its fluffy inhabitants? As we move forward, the focus is on managing the rabbit population and protecting the island's delicate ecosystem. In a world where humans and animals coexist, balance is key, and that's precisely what the local authorities and international animal welfare organizations are working towards. Firstly, there's the task of stabilizing the rabbit population. Various non-profit organizations are stepping in to provide sterilization programs. This helps to control the rabbit numbers without causing harm. It's a peaceful solution that respects the lives and well-being of these furry creatures. Next in line is the protection of the island's ecosystem. This is a bit more complicated, but efforts are underway. More and more, the island's caretakers are focusing on sustainable practices. This includes everything from waste management to the careful monitoring of the island's vegetation. After all, a healthy environment is crucial not just for the rabbits, but for all the island's inhabitants. And then there's the aspect of tourism. Yes, Rabbit Island is a unique travel destination that attracts thousands of visitors each year, but it's important that this tourism is conducted ethically. Travelers are now being educated about the do's and don'ts when visiting the island. This includes not feeding the rabbits processed food, not chasing or picking up the rabbits, and making sure they leave no trash behind. The goal is to create a harmonious relationship between the rabbits, the island's ecosystem, and its human visitors. It's a delicate dance, but with each passing day, we're getting better at it. So what's the future of Rabbit Island? It's a future that respects the lives of its rabbits, values its unique ecosystem, and encourages responsible tourism. It's a future where the dark past is remembered, not to be dwelled upon, but to ensure that history doesn't repeat itself. So, next time you see a photo of Rabbit Island, remember, there's more to this fluffy paradise than meets the eye.